Hey guys, welcome to the ace match of the TSL4 Korean Qualifiers number 4. This is the semi-finals between Liquid Tasia and TSL Shine. It is a ZVT on the Antigua Shipyards, and I'm really curious to what Tasia's going to be doing, because last game on Daybreak, he went for a one Rax double expo. Now, that's a very common map for Antigua Shipyards, but is he going to do the same build twice in a row, especially because it looked like Shine kind of had an answer to that build with that Roach Baneling bust that just just never stopped. He just kept killing Tasia's SEVs, going over 100 workers killed in a single game. But Ta uh, Shine, he's got to not feel good about that win. Yes, he won the game, but he probably feels like he could have won a long time ago. Like, Tasia just held on and didn't die for the longest time. What it should have been like a 15-minute game ended up being a 30-minute game. So is Shine going to be, if he sees the one Rax double expo, would he try to do the Roach Banley bust again on Antigua Shipyards, which is a little bit easier to defend than Daybreak? So a lot of mind games that can go on during this match. Additionally, you did have Tasia with the double proxy in game number one. Would he be doing it again? It looks like he isn't as an SCV is not leaving after that supply depot and going to be building a barracks in his main base. And we do have Shine now going to be sending a drone out to scout at the same time as he always done. Looks like it's around 30 13 or 14. Overlord is going towards the north, won't see Tasia here, the drone will go to the top left, find Tasia, and see what Tasia is exactly doing. Now he is at 14 supply with over 100 minerals, or he did have 100 minerals until he queued up more SCVs, so it is going to be a 1 Rax expand now out of Tasia. How will he follow this up though? Will he get gas immediately after this expand, or will he just expand again? So this is the next move that we have to wonder what Tasia is going to do. The drone is going to come out, we'll scout this, and because the drone gets sent out at like 14 or 15, there is a chance of a supply depot blocking that drone. I think it's much better to send it off at 13, but that's just my personal preference. If you see a supply depot block here, chances are it's going to be a 1 Rax kind of expo-ish type build, I assume. But we do have Tasia now, just going to go straight down here, going to build the expo on the low ground. Drone doesn't want to really do anything because, well, there's a marine out now, so no harassment really possible, just a really fast expansion out of Tasia, expanding off that one marine. And now the thing is, is he going to be getting gas? Going to be getting that second supply depot right now. We do see Shine taking his hatch and getting his pool of his own. It may even be safe for him to go up on a double expand really fast. We'll see if he ends up doing it this game because... He didn't really do that on Daybreak. Again, he went with that Roach Bane bust. But this drone does move down when he has around 300 minerals. But again, Pool's going to finish. He wants to build a queen. So double queens do go down. Not going to be going for a third base just yet. But that is still the possibility. This one drone going to be returning back on home. Going to be building four lings right now. That is quite a bit of lings to be building right now to fend off, I guess, against any early aggression that Tasia could put on, but with that super fast expansion, Tasia cannot put on any aggression whatsoever. So I'm kind of curious what Shine is going to be doing with these Lings. Again, it's not a huge overcommitment building four Lings right now, but you're still missing a drone. So he is going to be sending those four Lings up. Look at this one base. Not going to see any SCVs up there. It looked like the one drone wanted to go up to build a hatch. So maybe he was thinking Tasia was building a bunker here again. So he wanted to get those links, attack the bunker, and this one drone was going to go attack the bunker as well. And it could have been much like game number two where he tries to play some type of mind game. But Tasia not even going to be doing that, not going to get the bunker, just going to be building another command center on the high ground and getting the factory down now. So he went with that one Rax expand into double gas, into expansion, into factory. So definitely a little bit odd build out of Tasia. I'm thinking... He may go for, he has probably two options out of this. Since he got the double gas, I'm going to be assuming it is going to be some type of Banshee opening, but he could do some type of drop play with Hellion. So it could go Hellion drops. That is unlikely. Most likely it is going to be Banshee play since he did, again, get that double gas so quick, and he's still mining with six SCVs on gas. Getting a reactor right now. The factory will swap over, get some Hellions to get some scouting information, see if an all-in is coming shine. Just going to be taking the third base, and you need those Hellions out on the map, not necessarily to do damage, but you need at least four Hellions just to sit outside the Zerg base and just get scouting information so you see when the Roaches leave. Last game, Shine did such a good job about using those Queens to bait the Hellions away, so the Roaches got the Tasia's base before Tasia even really knew there were Roaches out on the map. So we'll see what exactly Shine does here. He is taking a third base, so this is already different than game number two. And Tasia getting a tech lab on this one barracks, so that will swap. He will go into Banshee play. 
So this is a relatively risky build out of Tasia, but it is going to be paying off for him. Gets those Banshees out, and he does get a lot of economy behind that. Now the question is, what will the Banshee actually do? And if Shine does end up going with Infestors, the Banshee can do quite a bit. It can pick off Infestors for quite a while, and that is really good. And on Antigua Shipyards, you're going to go Infestor play, because, well, Mutas are harassment units. You never want the Terran player to hold this middle ground. If they hold the middle ground, it can be game over really, really easily. So, most likely going to see Infestors out. So maybe that's why Tasia is going with those Banshees again. Banshees do a relatively good job against Infestors in low numbers, because... It's not really energy efficient to kill them. We do have Tasia now going to be landing his third base. Ling there going to be scouting that. Does not block the land. And a few Marines come over to just clean that up. Stim on the way along with Cloak. So this is going to be Cloaked Banshees. And this could possibly punish um, the three hatch double upgrade style that we generally do see. But we do see Shine getting the lair before the 1-1 one, one on the Ling. So this Cloaked Banshee not going to really be able to do all that much. Again... Tasia doesn't really know the timing of Shine's lair, so it looks like this will be done just in time to get those Overseers out. But if he delay this, and this was started when, like, this started, if he did it after the upgrades, you could see what type of trouble Shine would be in. So Tasia, his Banshee, not going to really pay off. It's going to give him some great scouting. Spore crawlers go up by Shine. Did he scout the Starport? Oh, he did scout the Starport with an Overlord, it looks like, so... He knew that was coming, that may be why he ended up going this one route. Tasia does get cloaked anyways. And Aspire is going down for Shine, so he is going to be going with Muta Play. Overseer here is with Queens, and that Banshee is going to be pretty much doing no damage whatsoever. But, did he even get scouting information? I think it saw the Spire. It saw the Spire, now the question is, did Tasia see the Spire? If he gets Missile Turrets up, yes he did. He's getting Supply Depots right now. He still has around 45 seconds to start those Missile Turrets to get up before Mutas come out. So there's no immediate panic, because he saw the starting time of it. And another Banshee is going to come in, try to go to this third base, but Shine does have Spore Crawlers up. Ling Zerg going to be coming over to Tasia's third base, see those Hellions, and immediately back on off. Banshee is just waiting for something. Shine doesn't have the best overlord spread. You can see none in this one top, like, if you go towards the right of Tasia's base. No overlords possible, so drop play could be coming and could do some type of damage. The Banshee is going to go up to three drones killed, so six so far out of the two Banshees he's built. And he should know Mutas are coming out now, so we should see missile turrets around the base, but we do not see any missile turrets being built, so I don't think Tasia really knows that Mutas are going to be on the way. Maybe he thought that was another Spore Crawler or a Spine Crawler building back there. Didn't click on it, didn't see the Spire, because if he did, oh no, there we go. Mr. Turret is going up. Look at that timing, though. So clutch timing out of Tasia to get those up. Just the last possible second. As uh, Mutas going to be popping. Well, he didn't build Mutas immediately after that Spire. They could be coming out like 20 seconds ago, which the Missile Turret would have been done just in time. And again, notice the Missile Turret placement of Tasia right where his Marines do not want to be. Doesn't really focus about, about Missile Turrets on this side, because the Marines, they can be here and not be out of the position. Where the Marines can be is way over here on this right side, because if the Marines are over here, that means damage can easily be done over to this base. And again, the same ideology goes over here. Missile turrets on the southern side because if the Marines are right here, he opens himself up for a lot of damage. So, great placement on those missile turrets right where Marines do not want to be. Perfect place to put him again. None in his natural because, well, his Marines, they can be here. If his Marines are in the natural, they're not out of position whatsoever. So, really nice turret placement for Tasia. I wouldn't mind one being in this uh, natural, but not having one doesn't really... Upset me all that much. Mutas are going to go take out one of those turrets. Marines do get there just in time. Only pulling a handful of Marines. Doesn't need to pull them again because he doesn't want to get pulled out of position. And Shine has such a good greet spot. This can be so hard for Tasha to abuse any type of Muta play. Lots of Banelings are morphing in from Shine. And he is going to be moving in, but that's a lot of creep. He has to push back. Mutas are going to go... No, it looks like they have to come back to defend against this. This is a lot of units out of Tasia. Those Lings are at 1-1 one, one right now. Marines are at 1-1 one, one as well. 2-2 two, is going to be done for the Lings before the Marines finish 2-2. Two, two. But we do have Passion Lands on the way, so Infestors will be built any second now. 
Doors in the queue for Tasia. He's also getting mech level 1 upgrades as he does finish his plus 2-2. Two, two. So, really keen about Tasia's upgrades. That's really nice. Always seems to have this plus 1 vehicle weapons timed to about his level 2 infantry. Really nice play out of him. Tanks is going to siege up on this high ground. He's got to burn a few scans, taking out all of these creep tumors. And a few queens will be going down right here. Again, once you kill these queens, it's going to delay the creep by quite a bit, but he cannot quite pick them off. But he is going to hold the middle of the map. Overlord's moving over to this left side. Drone's going to be transferred down here as we do have the fourth base coming up for Shine. As Tasia wants to take a fourth base of his own and does have a drop going off over to the right. And Overlords are now starting to spread. Will they see the drop? It doesn't look like they will. It looks like it will just... Glaze right on past. He saw it for a split second. Will he put units there for defense? That was such a small thing. I don't know if Shine saw that. He is morphing some more Banelings. I don't believe he saw it. He's going to be letting some Marines down just in case there's an Overlord over here or a base. So, doesn't know what's in that location. Going to unload and go see what exactly is happening. Does have two tanks on this middle, and that's only two. I guess he does have a big tank spread. Four tanks out, really well spread, and another medevac is moving out towards the left side. This Overseer will be seeing it. Marines will drop. Overseer does have the speed, will easily be able to get out of there. But it drops on the high ground, so Lings and Banelings can't really do much. He has to pull Mutas to defend against that, and well... We do have Tasia getting into position. This one drop is going in. Did not see a base over here. And big engagement going in. At the same time, Tasia is doing a drop. Tanks do get surrounded. That Thor is backing on up. So he doesn't get surrounded by Marines. Goes Bailey's exploding on the Thor. Tasia with some really nice micro. But it looks like this force in the middle gets cleaned up, which means this one base is in a little bit of trouble. It is APF. And Tasia trying to take down this one hatch is not taken down. Still only at six workers killed. Now this one drop. Over here, gonna try to go over here, may get some workers killed, but there is a spine crawler. PF did get cancelled, floated on back, and Tasia's actually in a little bit of a sticky situation. Shine is playing this so well, it looks like this one spine crawler will get taken out, but that's not really a big loss at all. 8 HP left, Marines do get up, and that spine crawler doesn't go down, did take out the Queen. But Shine has kind of survived through the hard put. He is getting Corruptors out, which means he is at Hive Tech, going to be getting up into Corrupt uh, Broodlords. And once he does that, the battle for the middle is no longer a downhill battle. It is more evenly matched between Tasia and the Zerg player, or Terran and Zerg, just because both units have sieging units. The Queen's doing the best to survive, transfusing each other. Again, needs to keep them alive just to keep spreading active creep tumors across the map. And looks like the Banshee is going to come in, cloaked, finish the job on that one spine crawler. Now the Marines can come into this base. Lots of links have been pulled, and that should allow Tasia to take high ground advantage. But again, Broodlord's going to be coming out. Tasia does scan, sees those Broods, and does have four Vikings at a time on the way, so he'll already at double reactor star point, so he can deal with the Broodlord transition. Read that perfectly, knew it was not going to be Ultralisk this time around, and just read that situation again. Perfectly. Now he wants to take control of the middle of the map so he can easily take out this one base. A handful of units do come. These, curiously enough, not going to be moving. Maybe Tasia forgot about those units. Everything is pulled for Shine to deal with this, so this does allow Tasia to get the middle of the map, kill these creep tumors on this high ground. And again, such an easy spot for Tasia to defend, but Broodlords are out, so this could not be as easy as it normally is. Both players are maxed out at 200 supply right now. And Shine, with those five Rulers, is going to be setting up the camp, and Tasia is forced to give up the high ground. Tank's going to siege a little bit late, going to tug it down those Infestors. Infestors will be going down, but look at those Fungals on those Marines. No more Infestors, though, which means even though these Marines are in the deep, deep red, they can storm ahead and kill off the Broods. The Broods are going down. Transfuses by Shine, it's keeping them alive. Mutas do come clean up the Marines. Oh, what a beautiful play by Shine there. There's Mutas actually doing well against Marines because the Marines did ha eat a fungal just before the battle and were all in the deep red. So that splash damage from the Mutas just clean up the Marines so quickly. But at the same time, we do have Tasia coming in to attack this one fourth base of Shine. And this is what Shine had trouble with in game number one was keeping a fourth alive. And Antigua is such a hard map to do that with. Vikings are out, Corruptors and Mutas are coming. Kind of curious if Tasia ends up getting um, Ravens out for a point defense drone so he can win that air battle. 
Raven's really good against Corruptors, and a lot of Zerg players, especially Shine, favor Corruptors and don't get like 20 Infestors out, so Raven's would be really good in Tasia's situation. Gonna be cutting a little bit with these uh, Vikings, picking off the Mutas actually. Looking like he was favoring taking those down, going into the HP. Yeah, looks like he was favoring the Mutas. And Tasia just trying to secure this fourth base. Now gets it up. It is in a PF. Mules mining. Has two gases going into the worker. 62 to 68. And that small group does get picked off. Just Overwoods right here. No base going down in that one side. We do have Shine now taking this one base. And this is a little bit troublesome because a lot of units on this high ground can just hit the hatch like tanks and marines. I think of marauders can hit the drones. So... Really hurt for Zerg to hold that one base. And that's going to keep the Zerg building Broodlords all game. Just having that one base saying, yeah, I need Broods. If he didn't have the Broodlords, he could take other bases like this and get Ultralix. Corruptors versus Vikings. Vikings do get Fungal Growth, and it looks like the Corruptors will be winning this battle. But the Infestors do not have the energy to deal with all the Marines. Tasia setting up huge flanks. Fungal Growth, Zerg going down, but is enough. Lots of links coming in from the back, but I don't think he has enough links. And once again, Tasia is going to be able to push ahead and take out a few Broodlords. But another phone goes through. Come, more Infestors come in, cleans up all those Marines. These Medivacs have to get out of there. But the Vikings have killed off all the Corruptors. The Medivacs were tanking some of the Corruptors hits. And now the Vikings may be able to kill these Broodlords off. Only two Vikings, or four Vikings now. But not enough energy to deal with those Corruptors on the way. But building a lot of links, Tasia does have handful of units back here going to be picking up in those medbacks, keeping them alive. And the Broodlord will not get taken down thanks to those infested Terrans, but that is so close. Tasia probably just can pull a few of those Vikings and clean up the job right here. And there we go, the Broodlord does fall. Infestors going down to those tanks. Will a scan get taken down? Nope, Lings do come down, clean up those tanks really quickly. 107 supply to 120 supply. And Shine is actually ahead on bases right now. Not something you normally see the Zerg player having no trouble with whatsoever. I'm not saying he's controlling the middle of the map, but he doesn't seem to be having a lot of trouble preventing Tasia from controlling the middle of the map. It's kind of just one of those, just, you go in the middle of the map, you're dead. That's basically what Shine is making this game out to be. He can't control the middle of the map, Tasia can't control the middle of the map. And that does kind of work out in favor towards the Zerg player, it looks like, saying, well, if you can't control the map, I'm free to take base, but Shine not really capitalizing on that. His minerals is staying so low, he can't really take a base. Needs to get another expansion up over here. I would say would be a great one to take, but Tasia does have the base over here. So maybe take another base on the left side. And that battle did not appear to go in Shine's favor. He is switching over to Ultralis just now, getting that chitinous plating. May need more Broodless before we can go to Ultralisk, at least until that one upgrade does finish. Thor is getting picked up a lot of cute medvac play out of Tasia this game. Thor is going to do a lot of damage to those Infestors, and maybe that's what's keeping Tasia in the game, is these mech upgrades are at plus two. The air upgrades are only at plus one attack, so this Thor would do a lot of damage to those Broodlords and Corruptors. We do have Lings running into this... Uh, base that got floated from the main. You can see no more orbital here. Tasia really good at that. Just taking his main base and floating it over to take an expo. So he doesn't even have to build another command center to get those minerals. He doesn't really need gas right now. You can see he is floating around 3,000 gas needs minerals. So these gases right him, that 200 gas means nothing. He needs the minerals so he floated his command center off. Very nice call. This one base is going to get taken out and we finally have the Zerg player going to be going up on another base. This should have been happening much, much sooner. Because now this base gets taken out, you have like 70 drones, so 64 drones, to mine off of one and a half bases. This base should be way oversaturated. Yes, you can see way oversaturated right here. So if you had this base earlier, the drones, when this base goes down, transfers down here, and he doesn't really take a big hit on economy at all. But because he didn't really have a place for these drones to go to, now Shine is taking a hit on economy. And uh, this base did get taken out. It looks like, yeah. Or maybe it lifted off and now it's going to go to the other side. Lifting off is the more acceptable answer. He's just going to move it down here. 
And Deja knows, okay, if I can hold this base, does he know about that one base? Yes, he does. He knows about this base, so if he can hold this base now, defending this base, putting a few tanks on this high ground, will not only defend this base, but damage this base. Really? Oh, uh, no, he's not going to do that. Maybe he thought of that before. He saw the base, and I was like, okay, that's not a good idea. Zook will put a lot in defending this, and if he puts too much to defend here, then this middle is unprotected, so... I guess I was wrong right there. No, it's gonna go back! Right when I admit I'm wrong, Dage is like, that. that's actually sounding like a really good idea right now. Trying to spread the Zerg out. Does have a handful of tanks on this high ground. Doesn't have plus three. He is not getting that just yet. A lot more units being built. Ultra still being built. Eight Ultras out. Tasia is going to be taking this one base, but a lot of Lings and Corruptors going to come. Command Center immediately going to be pulling on back, but now this does allow Tasia to move on ahead. If he can set up the contain right here, that will be so strong because the players are pretty much maxed out. Like, oh, all the army right here. So if Tasia can hold this area, then he can move in and snipe tech. So... That's what's probably going to be Tasia's next move, and that could be another reason why you want to take this base and get it. Force the Zerg army in this position, because if the Zerg army is ever up here, and he can hold this position, that's game over right there. So, that's going to be what Tasia's going to slowly try to do. Zerg has put a lot, all their economies on the left side, all their tech is on the right side. So this is a very odd situation for a Zerg to be in, because either place, you can easily get trapped in. So... Tasia, he's going to slowly move towards down here. One Marine over here, these Lings running around, that one command center. Having a little bit of an identity crisis, can't decide if he belongs in the north base or the southern base. Just floating back and forth between sides. He's like, I don't know where to go. Two Infestors, though, do come in. And there are missile turrets, so that will get taken out very quickly. Shine trying to do what he did in game number one. Get a few Infested Terrans out as he does move in. Has a lot of Altarlist right now. And going into the bank, neither player can really reproduce. Both players are stacking a lot of gas, but minerals, both players just do not have. Ling's down here, preventing Tasia from landing another base. Going to be taking another base of his own. So Shine is going to be ahead by two mining bases. Probably soon to be three, as this is almost mined out. So Tasia's going to have to make something happen relatively soon, or Shine will be able to out-macro him. Or at least just attack into this and rebuild his army, and Tasia won't be able to rebuild his army. You can see the uh, banks are getting higher for the Zerg player. He is going to be sending Lings out do counterattacks at this one base. One Marine right there. Lings are going to clean that up very quickly. Bunker is getting placed. Marines are up there, and this may not be able to do damage. There are two Bailings, but there is, you can see, Tasia's... Focus targeting down, morphing in more Banelings, even burring two Banelings right here. Oh, Scan does go down, still kills a few of those Marines, going to cancel the morph. But at the same time, we do have a lot of forces for Shine setting up. Is he going to attack, or is he just going to go into this space? What is he going to engage? It looks like he's just walking around Tasia, realizing, wait, I can engage Tasia. Tasia can be pulling some units down, getting into position, realizing exactly what is happening. And Shine just going to be pulling on back. Tasia going to be doing a drop. Going to take out this one base. But Shine does have a handful of units. And looks like he's going to be setting up for an engagement. Or is he just going to take out the base? It looks like he just wants to take out the base. But is he setting it up? Is he setting up a concave? Send a few units over here. The base does lift. Lots of bailings. Can't click on There we go. So we can see if the tanks just target them down immediately, how effective the Banelings will be. And those Ultras are going to start taking damage. And here we go, Banelings are going to come in. Fungros do go down, Banelings do get hits off. Infestors are coming in, they don't really get that many Fungals. Tasia has such a good hold of this middle. And those Ultras now trapped right now, and Shine supply is plummeting, but so is Tasia supply. Oddly enough, Shine is trading well against Tasia. The Infestors, though, are going down, going into the production. One Ultra, 12 Lings, Banelings, Queens. Shine not really reproducing right now. He can't really decide what he needs to build. Actually, he doesn't have Larva. That is something that generally you do not see. 11 Larva right now, but normally you'd see the Zerg player have like 50 Larva. So Shine 
giving up on injecting. Doesn't have really any queens at any hatches. No injects means he's not going to have that much lover to reproduce. Does have them over here, but again, 10 lover is not that much. And Tasia's still just at plus 2 mech upgrades, but he's almost pure mech with 4 Thors, 10 tanks, 11 marauders, 44 marines, so not pure mech, but has a lot of it out. Handful of bios just going to pull these lings out of position. May actually kill off these lings. Scan going down, seeing what is there. Another counterattack is going to go for Shine up to Tasia's north base, his like, last mining base. This base needed to get taken out. And a lot of the units are going to get trapped here for Shine, and this is not good. Broodlords are morphing in, but a little bit late. Banlings do hit. But again, this mech is just slowly going to be inching his way in. And now, no, he's going to be pulling back, going to hold the middle of the map. Saying he doesn't want to engage this. Maybe he saw the Brood Lords coming out. Broods are at 1-1 one, one right now. If he had plus 3 mech, the Thors would do so much damage. You can see 23 kills on that one Thor. That guy, definitely a hero. But basically it means the Thors have shot 23 times because they pretty much one kill everything besides Ultras. Two shot Roaches, I think, at this point. Maybe it's three shot on Roaches. And here we go. Tasia is coming on in. Is he just going to go up to that base? No, he's going to be moving on out. Going to snipe these two bases. Their spines will go down really fast. Curious if the tanks even go in siege mode. It doesn't look like he's even going to use siege mode. May use it once he gets over to the high ground. But this is probably the call for Shine to do a counter attack. There's nothing he can do to save these bases. And these Broodlords are so immobile. Tasia is playing with a big mech composition, but he's still more mobile than Broodlords. So now he's going to take out all the economy of Shine in this game. It's going to go down to one last army trade, and Tasia has a lot more army supply at plus 60 army supply. So Shine going to have a really tough time. He's going to hold the middle of the map, and that's what he needs to do. But is it going to be enough? I don't think it will be. 114 supply to 174. Army supply again. 96 to 155. Big fungus go off in those medevacs. That's what he needs. He needs to get more fungus off. Doesn't have that many infestors. Only five. They are maxed energy, but again, five infestors isn't that many. He's going to have to have the best fungal growth and then some. And there's a good one right there. That may be it. Banley's come scrolling on in. Gets all the bio. The bio is gone. And now he's trying to take out the Vikings. The Vikings go down. There's a chance the Broods may be able to push forward. A few Marines do remain, but those fungals were definitely what he needed. But you can see, doesn't have supply, and that's still plenty of Marines out. Going to be killing all of the Broodlers. You can see, even the Infestors want to take damage, and they're not the best at taking damage, let me tell you that. And the Broods going to be falling, along with any hope that Shine had make it to the finals. Tasia will be advancing into the finals. Very well played out of him. Shine, disappointed right now, trying to think what where he went wrong, what happened, saying, man, I played Antigua Shipyard so well. And that he did indeed play it really, really well. He knows Tasia, though, is not mining. And he's got one Infestor out, so this is going to have to be the Rambo Infestor. You can see it is gutted by four Queens. So, with this one Infestor, he's got to kill 80 Supply of Army. Well, he's got three Banelings to help him out, but that's not looking good. You can see these SCVs want to come up, build a wall with these barracks so they can safely mine. And then once they can safely mine, then put like two marines behind these barracks. No more counterattacks. And Tasia has secured himself a mining base. Now he's got 10 energy. He's got to wait for that one. Well, no, he's got this one landed. So scan goes down. That goes. He's actually lifted these off. He's not building them. He didn't have the money to build them. But yeah, Tasia's going to be mining once all the SUVs get in. Then we will have the barracks landing. You can see them doing the same thing over at this one base. So Tage is just making it impossible to counterattack. And Festus, there's more than one out now. Gets a fungal off. Killed a Viking. So now it is 79 supply.
He has to kill Withers and Festers. Queens are gonna come. Not the best against Marines. They do a whopping one damage per hit against the Yeoman Marines. Overwoods are gonna get taken out. And this one base is gonna fall, but not the biggest deal. Infestitans do come down. Transfuse going down, gonna kill off tanks. Now he's got 65 supply to kill. That's just not going to happen. Down to 8 supply. No more infestors. 6 supply, 3 drones, 1 ling, 3 banelings, 5 supply, 2, 96 supply. Very well played outer shine, but it just was not enough. Tasia had just too much stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the series. Do not forget to upload this on SE2Cast.com because that is how I've been getting all my viewers and my subscribers has been going from like 2 average daily to 10 average daily thanks to the IPL Korean qualifiers with getting like 5,000 views a day. So please, 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 SC2Cast.com. You can just look down here. It's right there. Wow. Those overlays are actually a little out of place. Let me fix that right now. I did not notice that in the past. wonder when that happened. There we go. That's ugly. Oh, well, that is fixed. And uh, I'm going to open up SE2 Gears real quick. We're going to look at this best of three. I want to do this last game, but I forgot about it. So we'll look at the Injects. Actually, all three games. The Injects in number one were because he took out Queens. Number two... Forget what happened in number two. Oh, number two, that one queen in the main had a lot of energy. Like, way, way, way too much energy. Like, 50, 70 energy, then injected, so missing two injects there when he was doing those all-ins. So, not to harp on his play too much, but I just want to look at those injects. In game number one, I want to see how long Tasia was just stuck building up marines. So, look at a few things real quick. I'm opening up now, so give me a minute. There we go. Go over to this. There we go. Game number one, Ohana. Let's go over to Injex. Main building control. Wow. That looks surprisingly well. So we'll look at all three games real quick. I know they're different lengths. So let's see. 28 minutes. Boom. So, that's kind of funny. Like, both these games, like, at this 25 minute, he stops injecting. Over here, let's go to 25 minutes. He's still injecting here. But you can see he's on top of the injects until that 30 minute mark. And then once that 30 minutes rolls around, he's really far behind. But let's go to 10 minutes now in these games. This game left undisturbed, 9.1 seconds. Not bad, not great. Could be better. Could be like 7. Let's see, did he do any tumors? Let's see, inject count. Where is it? This. Uh, abilities groups. No way he's at 26 right there. That doesn't make any sense. Let's see. What was it? Creep. We're just searching for the very first thing. Spawn creep tumor. So. Bear with me one minute. Seven. That can't be right. He can't have seven. That's not possible at ten minutes. 43 minutes in the game. Let's go in the game. This is game number three, right? Game info. Shipyards, yes. Seven, ten minutes. Do you really have that many active tumors out? Have I just not used SE2 gears since like that four queen thing came out? That is a lot of active tumors that quick in the game. So let's go back to XSplit. Back into StarCraft, ten minutes. We'll have to look at this. Yeah, well, that's spread really fast, so. I just haven't used SC2 gears since that 4 6 queen meta change.
So, okay. I'm, that's correct. Wow. Seven active tumors by the ten minute mark. So before people started building those four to six queens, this was only four, I think, or maybe five because you got another base. But the four queens, you were lucky if you had one tumor out at that point. That's seven. Wow. Those queens come out much quicker than I thought. Well, I just look like an idiot. Oh well. That's what you learn when you open up SC2 gears every now and then. So. Let's go over into this and let's do build queen. When do those second queens start? When are they out? So do that. Search right here. What is the queen syntax? Select train. It's not build train. Okay, so. Yeah, wow. It looks like Maybe one of those got cancelled. 545 says he has five queens. He's got four. So one of those got cancelled. SE2 Gears, I don't think, shows the cancellations. Maybe that's it. I don't know why there's five queens showing. But in the game, there's, at that mark, you saw only those four. And there's not one in production. So, okay. But you can see really how quick those tumors do come out. Pretty cool. Uh, let's see. What do we have? And let's go. Game number one. Let's keep this on. Let's keep the creep tumor thing going on. Let's keep talking about that. So, in game number one. Let's see. Ability groups. Ten minute mark, he has five, so let's go twenty five minutes. He made forty one creep tumors, let's just creep. Eighty one at twenty five minutes in game number one. Game number two, twenty five minutes, let's see how many he has. This is where you place your bets. Thirty two one. Oh, not that. I'm going to guess 96. Let's just put this filter back on. 70. That doesn't make sense. 80, 70. This is Daybreak. Yeah, just didn't do a good job on that map. That's actually a really impressive job by Tasia, just how many he killed in uh, game number one. Because... It never really went that far in Ohana. They just did that good of a job killing them all. And over here. Ninety-nine. So Game three, really good creed spread. Game two, bad. Game one. It was really good. Looking at the stats, looking at overall, it was bad. So, I hope you guys enjoy the games. Take care, and uh, I will not see you soon. I want to look at one last thing. Unit tiers. Take this filter off. It's not as bad as I thought. Taze is still doing plenty of gas stuff. Tanks, tanks. Right here, you can see like that was after a Roach Bane bust when we had no gas whatsoever, just pure Marines. So, here's he's trying to recover. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the games. Take care, and I will see you next time.